whether it's going to be in that pouch that I'm autoclaving or whether it's going to be the instruments in the muslin wrap. Now, when we, if somebody can hand me one of those pouches, one that's not autoclaved, I appreciate it. Uh, the pouch. Yes, thank you. So, this has a plastic side and a paper side. I'm going to go through the steps of how we autoclave instruments, but what's important is we want to make sure that we put the plastic side down, so that we put the paper side down. The steam is coming from the bottom, and what it'll do is a lot of the condensation make this wet, and it will tear the paper, and now my instruments are exposed, and I'm going to be wasting everybody's time, okay? So when we place instruments in here, we want to place our instruments face down, and as you can see, it's pink. I should have a sterilization indicator strip in here. And what is my uh, shelf life for this one? Six months minus one day. Right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I just want to check this. But I have a reservoir here. I don't know if you can see it. There's a reservoir and it has water. Okay. And so I'm not going to put my uh, instruments in here yet. I'm going to go through the process. All right. So what I would do is this. I am going to first check my reservoir down here and I can see I'm very low on water so now I'm going to use distilled water the reason why I use distilled not spring not tap not purified is because only distilled water works best with an autoclave if you use any other type of water it will cause corrosion and it'll make the parts not work and not autoclave properly and it's it can be expensive um, having to fix this and what they would have to do is give you a loan or autoclave until they fix it So always 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 use distilled water now this one here has it so that you can pour it in there And then as you're pouring this would rise up But I usually make a mess when I'm doing that. So I'm just going to pour By opening this and there's a line that you'll be able to see in here There we go, and I can see That it's mostly filled just enough of what I need, then I'm going to put this back down. Oops. Put it all aside. Here we go. Okay. So now I've got my distilled water in here. And it's a pretty simple process. You basically are going to go from here, this side, you go from the distilled water, you go here, you come down, and then go up on this side. So you don't have to kind of, over, you don't have to overthink it, right? You're just going to go from here on this side. So I put the distilled water in. I'm now going to turn my machine on. I see the light has turned green. I'm now going to go to this part here, okay? Now, I'm going to explain before I turn because I don't want the water to overflow. Where it says fill water, once I turn that on, I'll be able to see when I take my tray out that the water is going to start to come out of the hole, okay, at the bottom. When it does that, to make it stop, I have to turn it to sterilize. I wish it said stop the water. I wish it said something like don't do any more, but it doesn't. So we have to know that sterilize means stop the water, okay? Once I do that, and the, and the reason I, when I'm going to stop is when that water gets right here to this little divot here, that's your stop line, okay? There's a little divot here, all right? So after the water gets there, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my instruments face down. Remember, the plastic is going to be face down. When I'm placing these type of instruments in the muslin wrap, I like to place it not exactly on top of it, but kind of a way. And you can, you can put a lot of things in here, like say you're doing um, post-op surgical dressing. I can put a little cling wrap, a little round cling wrap that you saw, and I can also put some 3x3 three three or 4x4 four four gauze in there. So they'll use that during the surgical procedure, but you'll also use it when I'm doing a post-op dressing change. So I'm going to place this and put it in here kind of to the side, okay, like that. So after that, I'm going to close this and I would lock it. Now I'm going to go through this, but I want to show you the end first, but I'm not going to be able to do it because it's going to take 30 minutes or so. So after I hit sterilize to stop the water, I place my instruments in. I'm going to do this and lock it, okay. Once I lock it, now I go up here because remember, we're just going in this order. So I have 250 to 273 degrees Fahrenheit. All right. An autoclave with the steam heat, because that's what we use. We don't use gas or anything like that. But in, our, in the medical uh, assisting office, in our office, we use 
um, an autoclave that's anywhere between 250 and 273 degrees Fahrenheit. If I'm trying to do something that's light, like a soft tissue pack or whatever, I'm going to have somewhere between 250, maybe halfway between that and 273. And my time is usually going to be anywhere between 30 minutes to 45 minutes. But if I have heavier instruments, like a bone pack, then I'm going to do it at least an hour. Okay. So once I've um, set my temperature, now I'm going to set my time. When it's done, this one gives a little bell and it'll say bing. And then it's time for me to open it. But there are other ones where it does not let you know. So you'll have a little timer and you'll turn that to make sure that you don't mess up. Okay. And also you need to watch this. Don't do what I did where you walk away trying to do five things at one time and now the water comes out because you misjudged it. So you need to really watch this so that you don't create a mess. Okay. After it dings and I'm all done, I literally cannot open this. Okay. Because one thing I have to do is now turn it from sterilized to extra dry. So now the machine has to kind of decompress because that pressure is really built up in there. You can't open this up and the temperature is too high. So now we're going to look to make sure the temperature is somewhere like in this lower uh, uh, area right here, somewhere between 30 and 40. And every um, autoclave is a little different and sometimes they'll give you a range of where you can allow it to go before it's um, decompressed enough for you to open it. Then I want to get the utility glove, okay? And because I don't want to touch the instruments and I can have two or one. And so after again, it's decompressed, I'm going to watch that needle move down. I'm going to stand on this side, okay? And I'm going to open this up, okay? When I open it up, I'm going to open it up using my utility glove only a quarter of a way because the steam is going to come out and you don't want to get burned. Once I'm done, it's going to be pretty wet. Then I'm going to use my utility glove and I want to get a towel because I don't want to put it right on the counter because sometimes it's so hot that it could um, mess the counter up or, you know, do some, some other type of harm. Then I'm going to take my instruments out with the autoclave, put them on the towel, okay, and hopefully it's not too wet. If I start to see that it's too wet, it's time to service um, my autoclave or it's time to clean it. So there is solution that you can put in here to try to clean it to get all the corrosion or whatever else out. Or sometimes you just need to do what? Maintenance. Okay? All right. So now we have uh, finished with um, our 